At LEDWP, we believe that pollinators are very important. And if you look at the things that we've emphasized, it's not just water and power, but it's also the creation uh, of, of natural plants, the replacement of, of turf with native plant species and California friendly gardens, all the way up to, northern, to the uh, Eastern Sierra up north, where we have uh, major revegetation programs, where we're bringing native vegetation back into the environment, uh, both to offset the, the incidence of invasive weed species, and also to bring the environment back to what it's been centuries ago. And it's so important uh, uh, to look at the lands that we own and to see how we can really promote the recreation of, of the natural environment and the pollinators are such an important part of that. So here we are at the Hollywood Reservoir. I am here with Maria at Los Angeles Department of Water and Power and um, we are so excited at EPRI to be scoping out this project with LADWP. The opportunity here is just is just phenomenal to have the Hollywood sign. This is an iconic place in Los Angeles. It is a travel destination and we're working on restoring and educating about some of the pollinator habitat here. This renewed focus on um, the ecosystem, protecting pollinators, um, and addressing the critical biodiversity issues is, is really um, the next step of our focus. My name is Helen Olivares. I am a uh, waterworks engineer for the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. And my team and I manage all of the water system facilities within the LA Metro area, including Hollywood Reservoir. Our group operates and maintains the Hollywood Reservoir property, which is about 400 acres. In this property, this includes the actual Hollywood Reservoir itself. And in addition to being really beautiful, it serves as an emergency water supply. Around the Hollywood Reservoir, there's a three and a half mile walking path and that's open to the public every day. I was so pleased when I got here and could see all the native plants that were already here. So uh, the, you know, the project here is really about optimization and then creating that opportunity for education and, and, um, and outreach. Pollinators and ecosystems don't just have to be put within their special park reserve. Right? You can have concrete, and you can have fences, and you can have urban habitat. And so the idea that there is like basically a road here, a three and a half mile road, at first I was like, oh my gosh, there's a road. And then I was like, this is amazing. Anybody in a wheelchair or a bicycle, or if you want to go running or hiking or anything, anybody can come here and use this road, right? As an example. <laughs> This uh, pollinator initiative is fantastic. In the 1970s, when there was this incredible discovery about how systems thinking was inc very important, that we couldn't just be planning for you know, anything from where we were putting housing or where we were doing roads, uh, but that it, was, it had to be an integrated strategy where you were, you were actually thinking about uh, the forests and uh, what the forests gave us and the transportation systems and the, the water. And there was a consciousness, I would say in the last 10, 15 years, about bees. And then as we started getting deeper into the, the bees and wasps, the nursery started growing the plant material. So since all this uh, drought started, uh, we've been uh, refraining from using lawns. All our lawns, we stopped watering them and slowly we've been converting every station to a more drought tolerant landscape using pollinators, agaves, anything with uh, to minimize the over overhead spraying. Salvia apiana or white sage. Uh, this plant is uh, it's native. It's native locally. You'll find it more on drier slopes higher up. Some of the high points at the facility. It has a very strong aromatic fragrance and it's a great pollinator plant. It'll shoot uh, flower spikes up sometimes four or five feet high and you'll just hear them buzzing with uh, all different species of uh, honeybees and, and native local bees, sand bees, hoverflies, hummingbirds take a crack at it. We have our own in-house nursery and we keep all of these there. We use these on projects. Uh, when we do pollinator gardens, sometimes we're doing plantings at distribution facilities and under transmission lines and uh, whenever possible we, we use these, these native plants. Can you talk a little bit about the diversity of your customers and 
who you have to actually serve within um, Los Angeles. LA is a cultural melting pot with over 95 languages spoken in homes. LADWP has, uh, you know, made sure that all of our programs and incentives are true to equity metrics, right? Making sure that we, we take a look at things with a lens toward equity, diversity, and inclusion. This topic of pollinators is fundamentally an equity issue because we all depend on food and we all eat food. And if pollinators um, are in decline and are at risk themselves, then our safe and cost-effective and nutritious food supply is at risk. And who will, um, who will receive the brunt of that first is the communities that have the least ability to handle it. Absolutely. And again, at LADWP, we look at um, affordability as um, one of the key issues of our programs, right? Um, and just making sure that, you know, as we continue to invest in providing green energy and sustainable water to Los Angeles, that we make sure that our rates continue to be affordable. Um, because at the end of the day, it is the... Um, underserved and the disadvantaged communities that already bear the brunt of climate change in terms of pollution and food insecurity, right, that have to also um, add to their bills, their electric utility bill. And so we make sure that um, we are part of the solution at LADWP. Everyone should be a 10 minute walk to a park, but we do not have that. And that park and that green space are homes for our pollinators. And that's why the board places a huge priority on our pollinator initiative. Because our transmission lines, our projects span seven states. That's a huge asset for us. We have all of those available spaces that we can create and design from scratch so that those pollinators will have a home and will be as friendly uh, as a habitat to our residents, four million residents in the city of Los Angeles. And mind you, um, the loss of habitat for our pollinators affect everything that we do. From our food system to our water system, they are impacting the health of our communities. This project at the Hollywood Reservoir to provide an educational opportunity for the general public that's there to go for a hike or exercise. But while they're there, we can inoculate them with science about pollinators. This Power in Pollinators program really allows us to take a pause and learn not just from the scientific experts, the technical experts, but also from our colleagues from um, all over North America with other electric utilities working together mm -hmm. to protect pollinators.